Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the set review for Guilds of Ravnica for White. So we're not going to waste any kind of time and jump right into the cards here today. Um, so I kind of talk about them throughout the pre-release through each of those videos, but it's not really like um, like in a, in a particular order, really. You no, know, sometimes I like to talk about commons and uncommons than rares in those videos. Uh, but toward the end of the previous season, it kind of gets more random, more scattershot. And these are kind of videos to kind of solidify if you're if you like white or if you like the color red or blue or whatever. These are the videos where you look at all the colors or all the cards within that color and go, OK, I want to get into this particular color. And that's what we're going to do here today, starting with our number one card from Guilt of Ravnica. This is Blade Instructor, a three mana three one human soldier with Mentor. Probably fine in draft and sealed. Not going to see any kind of standard play, and uh, that's about it for this card. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a more expensive Raptor Companion. Obviously, it's more expensive because of the Mentor ability on top of it. This is a new ability if you're not familiar. Whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Um, this is fine. The problem here with this card is that it has one toughness and it's going to trade with basically anything uh, that it's going to attack into because it's at three uh, mana instead of two mana. Again, it's going to probably hit something uh, whenever it attacks in on turn four, which is not fantastic for us at all. Moving on, though, we've got number two here, Bounty Agent, a two mana, two, two rare human soldier with vigilance. Sacrifice Bounty Agent, destroy target legendary permanent that's an artifact, creature or enchantment. This is a commander and brawl card all over it, although brawl is kind of now being sunset, which is a little annoying, but OK, OK, this is more of a commander card only. <laughs> um, I think this card is probably really bad in draft and sealed might get you like a one off kill from like a random legendary creature sometimes. Um, but if you pick this in draft, you're probably going to feel bad about it. Um, if you do pick it like in, in, as an afterthought, it's probably gonna be a sideboard card until it comes in. It is a two two with vigilance for two, which is not terrible. It's just not thin. It's just not like great. Um, just one of the lower end slots you want to put in in your draft and sealed deck. If you get into this for like standard, if you want to build around this in standard, it's really great sideboard tech being able to get rid of a uh, legendary artifact creature or enchantment that matters a bit more in uh, standard. But I feel like where this card is going to really shine is going to be commander. Moving on, though, we've got a candlelight vigil, a four mana enchantment or enchant creature enchanted creature gets plus three plus two and has vigilance. Nightly Valor, this is not sadly for four mana. This is kind of expensive. It's definitely a common, but it is kind of OK since it does give vigilance on top of the pump abilities here. Uh, so your creature can attack and block, which is very nice. Um, I think this is probably just going to be a low draft pick for you in white. Um, not that great for standard. Obviously, you're probably not going to see any kind of standard play because it's so expensive. Uh, but for draft and seal, this is probably OK. Going to slot into your like, you know, your 26, 27th pick uh, in your deck list. If you got a lot of creatures to put this on top of. Next up, we've got Citywide Bust, a three mana sorcery rare. It's short all creatures with toughness four or greater. Now this card, this card is going to see play in like every format. Um, going to see play in standard, definitely going to see play in commander. Great for draft and sealed uh, because this is one of the cards where if you're in a mono white deck or a white mini deck or a Boros deck or whatever in draft and sealed, this is a card you definitely want to have in your board uh, because it's going to get rid of all those big green monsters, those big blue flyers, anything like that that you don't like on your opponent's side of the field, it's going to deal with. Of course, it destroys all creatures with toughness four or greater. So that is something to keep in mind for your board state. However, if you're in white, you probably got a lot of one ones and two twos and three threes and city wide buses probably not going to hurt you at all. And that's perfect for you. That's exactly what you want to be doing when you, whenever you're going forward into uh, those kind of games and draft and seal. For standard, though, this is going to be a great sideboard card if you're a white weenie deck or a Boros deck or a Selesnya deck. This card is great in all of those formats. I uh, cannot, cannot wait to play this in standard. Moving up, you've got Collar of the Culprit, another card with a giant on it. That's pretty cool. A four mana instant. Uh, common here to show a target creature with toughness four or greater. So very similar to the citywide bust here, uh, but it's only targeting one creature and it's at a common for four mana. So this is still very good for draft and sealed, not necessarily a standard pickable card or a commander pickable card uh, because it's being, you know, one creature instead of multiple creatures. But for draft and sealed, this is fine removal that you slot into your deck list. Um, very good against those big bombs in green and red and blue. Um, Probably not going to hit anything a white against your opponent unless they have like an angel on the other side of the field, like a 5-5 five, five angel. Uh, but besides that, I think it's a very good card and a card you probably want to put into your main board in draft and in sealed. So very good for that particular format. Moving up, we've got Conclave Tribunal. Uh, moving on from the col col collar here. That's a four mana enchantment. It's an uncommon with Convoke. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. This is a card that's probably going to see play commander and standard 
in draft and in sealed. Probably won't see any kind of play in modern, obviously, because it's just too expensive. However, this can be, you know, almost free <laughs> in standard, which is super nice. This is the reason it's probably going to be replacing uh, things like Ixalan's Binding. Although Ixalan's Binding hits things that where they can't they can't recast the same spell, so that's kind of the leg up that Ixalan's Binding has. This is good for a mono white weenie deck in standard, where you can tap a bunch of your small creatures and put this onto a large like planeswalker or large creature, a large threat on their side of the field quite quickly without spending too much mana of your own, which I think is very useful. Um, this is also good in draft and sealed for you, of course, because it's just good exile hate. And they're not really gonna have, or your opponent really won't have a much main board uh, like enchantment hate uh, in game one, unless they get into that rare that, you know, has like multiple options. Um, but I think this card for draft and sealed, all-star, great removal card in standard. Probably gonna see some play for sure in a go-wide strategy with creatures. And, uh, you know, probably might see some play in a commander deck if they want to use the uh, Convoke ability here, so nice for that. Moving up, we've got Crush Contraband. This is a four mana instant. Choose one or both, which is why this card is fantastic. Exile target artifact, exile target enchantment. So, um, Saffron and Olive kind of talked about the, how this card might be a good commander card, and I kind of was scratch, scratching my head on it for a little bit, going, how can this be a good commander card? It's kind of expensive, but then I read it again and said, choose one or both. You can exile an artifact and enchantment. So that's basically a mana rock and something else they're doing on their side of the field. Like a, um, you know, like the, the thing we just talked about, the uh, Conclave Tribunal, if they have that on the battlefield, something like that. Um, this is so much better than I thought it would be. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna be great for standard, maybe some cyborg action, perhaps. Uh, for Draft and Seal, this is definitely gonna be a cyborg card through and through. Um, it's one of those cards that has just very narrow focus, and you're not gonna just get into a lot of enchantments and artifacts in game one against your opponent. So if you skid into this, put it in your sideboard for now, and then bring it in in game two. If you're up against an opponent that has a lot of auras, a lot of enchantments, or a lot of artifacts, like the different lockets that are in uh, the set here. Moving right along from this card, we've got Dawn of Hope, a two mana rare enchantment. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two cardless. If you do draw a card, you can pay four, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So in Draft and Seal, this is an all-star card, a card that's definitely gonna help you go off basically every single turn, make some 1-1s one, if you don't have anything in your hand or useful in your hand. Um, if you also gain life, you get to draw a card and get into card advantage, which is also super good in Draft and Sealed. Um, I'm not sure this will see much play in standard, just a little too narrow for how it's gonna be like applied in that format. This card to me feels much like a commander card where you wanna kind of tool around with it, gain a lot of life, draw some cards by paying some mana or making a huge board state with a bunch of one ones. So this card also goes really well with the uh, enchantment that makes four four tokens instead of one ones if you or whatever you create um, in, the, in, the, in the Guilds of Ravnica set as well. So Dawn of Hope is very interesting for that. Uh, but right now I feel like just in Draft and Seal, it's probably gonna be a great all-star card for if you don't have much in your hand um, to help you kind of elongate the match, creating blockers, as well as uh, just drawing you card advantage because it creates a 1-1 token with lifelink, which means if they trade with anything, you gain life and you can pay two extra mana and draw a card on your opponent's turn. That's crazy, super powerful. Um, but again, probably not gonna see any kind of standard play, just a little too narrow and uh, specific there. Moving up, we've got Demotion, a one white mana enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature can't block and its activated abilities can't be activated. Um, this is super interesting, a very good card to turn off a creature on your opponent's side of the field if you're being aggressive. Um, also good if your opponent has one of those cards that has like a tap ability or any kind of uh, activated abilities as well. Very nice for that. Uh, I'm not going to see any kind of standard play. Might see some commander play because, it, again, it's it's not necessarily making the creature unable to attack, which is um, kind of cool. It makes it so your opponent might not remove this aura as frequently as they would or would want to. Um, they, may, they may not want to waste a card on this card, which is uh, interesting. Um, but it does turn off the blocks there, which is very cool for you. So you still get in some damage against your opponent. So I like this card a lot for draft and sealed. Uh, kind of a card that like you, they want to they want to remove it obviously because you know they, that way they can block. Um, but if they don't care about blocking, then this card really doesn't do anything. So if you're ahead in the match, this card is great. If you're behind in the match, this card is probably not as good, but still better uh, than nothing almost. <laughs> uh, but let's move on here. Divine Visitation, this is the other enchantment I was talking about. A five minute enchantment mythic. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many four, four white, cre white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. So we talked a minute ago how those that uh, enchantment creates some one ones with lifelink. Instead of creating one ones with lifelink, why not create four fours with flying and vigilance? Uh, Stacking those two is super interesting. Uh, might be a real thing, maybe in um, standard, probably more so in commander. Um, but this card is very, very interesting, but kind of terrible actively. If you get into it in draft and sealed, I really don't see a place where this card could be good in that format, unless you get into a lot of token production, a lot of Celestian token production. 
um, in draft and sealed. So it might just be a card that you're really interested in playing for standard and for uh, commander. Um, but for draft and seal, this card might just do nothing for you because there's so little token production in the format. So this is something to kind of be uh, very wary about. If you get into this in draft as your third pack rare and you already have a lot of in, like you know token production already in your deck, this card is amazing. A great cherry on top can definitely be in a deck that like you know dominates. Uh, but it is a card that can almost do nothing if you don't have any of that token production. So, interesting card, probably, probably well suited for Commander and maybe some uh, standard brewing. Next up for us, we've got Flight of the Equinox. I think that's how you pronounce that. Eight, eight mana, four, five with Convoke and Flying. So eight mana, four, five Flyer, that's really bad. But since there's Convoke on this, this makes it actually quite good. I'm making it, you know, you can make it a possible four mana, four, five Flyer. Makes it much better against your board or on your board state. Um, I'm not sure if this will see any kind of standard play. I definitely think this might see some brewing around for sure because you could get like a, a one mana four or five flyer uh, depending on how wide your board state actually is and on what turn the match and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll see how like as far as efficient this card is for that particular format. But I think for draft and steel, this card is definitely fine. A great draft pick for you. A good flyer, four or five flyer is nice. Um, the problem here is if you're behind in a match, this card is absolutely terrible because it's eight mana for four or five flyers. So be very careful on when you put this in your deck list. Um, I do think this is a card that can be very good when you're ahead, can be very bad when you're behind, uh, but make sure that you actually have a deck that actually has a lot of creatures in the battlefield to be able to make this a little bit more uh, affordable. Moving right along from this card here, we've got Gird for Battle. Again, this uh, this title here makes me kind of chuckle. A one white mana sorcery put a plus one plus one counter on, on up to each of two target creatures. Uh, very interesting for Draft and Sealed. Not going to see any kind of play outside of that. Um, it's not an instant, so it can't be used as a defensive spell, uh, but still very, very good at being able to kind of, uh, you know, overgrow your opponent's creatures and then go through. Uh, like if your creatures are one ones and their creatures are one ones, you can make your creatures two twos and then swing in. I think that's very useful uh, for Draft and Sealed. Just besides that, this is probably not going to see any kind of play elsewhere, uh, but still quite a good card for just that particular like narrow minded situation. So uh, I think this is probably going to be a low draft pick for you for draft and sealed, um, maybe filling up that 25, 26 slot in your deck. Uh, moving up here for us, we've got Hazda Marshall, a one white man, a one one human soldier. This is an uncommon. Now, this is a card that will definitely be in a draft and sealed deck if you get into it. Whenever it attacks and at least two other creatures attack, create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So kind of in a battalion ability here, which is quite interesting uh, for Guilds of Ravnica. Really do like this for a white winnie deck in standard especially, and I do think this card is very, very good uh, in a draft and seal deck because again, it's a one mana one one, so getting down really quickly and being able to, able to create creatures over and over again, turn over turn, if it does get you know unblocked uh, as it's attacking in. So again, one of those cards where it's very good when you're ahead, kind of bad when you're behind, um, but it's still a one mana one one, so it's coming down on turn one, which I think is very good. Um, so one of these cards that definitely needs to be experimented with. A lot of white stuff here so far has a lot of good power uh, for draft and seal. And I think this is another card that just kind of shows that. Um, so good card for that. I do think that um, this definitely will be in a standard deck for me for brewing for sure. It's kind of one of those cards where I feel like it might just explode and be very painful for your opponent um, if you continue to attack in turn over turn. But for draft and seal, this card is just okay to me. Moving up here, we've got Healer's Hawk. Now, this is a card I really like as well. This is a one mana, one, one flying with lifelink. Very, very good against uh, most of the board states in Draft and Sealed because, again, turn one play, so it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's going to get in a lot of damage, probably two or three points of damage before it's even blocked on your opponent's side of the field, unless they have their own Healer's Hawk. Um, one point of damage getting in from Flying and Lifelink means you're probably going to get 23, 24 life before they actually have a, like, a chance to deal with this card uh, because Flying that early in the game is very like rare most of the time. Um, so very, very good card for behind and ahead in Draft and Sealed. Um, probably going to see some play in a White Winnie deck in Standard again as well. Um, or even just a bird deck. There's a bird travel deck, I'm sure, pinging around somewhere. <laughs> this this might be in as well. A blue-white flyers list for sure, too. Um, love this card for that as well. Um, just a great card overall for Draft and Sealed. Love this for that. I'm not going to see any kind of standard, or not, not that standard, uh, commander play or modern play or anything like that. Just um, not efficient enough for those particular formats. It doesn't do enough. Uh, but because it's so efficient at what it does for Draft and Sealed, this card's going to see play all day long. Moving on, we've got Hund Witness, a one mana, one one human. When it dies, create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. This is okay. It's not a Doom Traveler because it doesn't create a one one flyer. And that's kind of bad to me. Uh, for Draft and Seal, this is going to be a card that's probably going to trade with something immediately and then make another one one in its place. 
and that's fine because it does have lifelink and can go well with other things in your deck list. Um, there's no sacrifice outlets in like this particular like set really. Um, so Hunted Witness is just a basically just a wall or a creature that you can attack in with stuff on top of it if you want to uh, to be able to trade for stuff, which is fine. Um, for standard, this card's not going to see any kind of play, I don't think. Um, and this card is probably not going to see any kind of play in kind of in like a modern commander, that kind of stuff like that. Um, just kind of a lower pick card for me for uh, draft and sealed. It is a one mana one one, so it is a card that comes in and it is aggressive, and it can trade and make a one one life linker. It just it doesn't have the evasion or the long term longevity as the other two one drops we talked about previously. So that's kind of where I'm not a big fan of it here. Moving up, we've got Inspiring Unicorn. Love the uh, name here and the art. This is nice. A four mana two two uncommon unicorn. Whenever it attacks, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Now this, this is a card in Draft and Sealed that just will just end the game for you. Um, a board-wide uh, plus one plus one against all of your creatures whenever this attacks is super good. Even if this card does die, it, it is a 2-2. Two -two. Wish it was a 3-3, three -three, but I think that might have been too powerful. Or even a 2-3, two -three, that'd be great too. But a 2-2 two -two coming in, pumping your entire board state uh, on a turn five attack. This is probably going to be a card that's going to like win the game for you. A great way to close out a match and draft and seal. Obviously not good enough for standard because it's four mana instead of like, you know, two mana or something like that. Um, but still very, very impactful for draft and sealed. Cannot wait to play this in a white deck. Uh, maybe Boros for a draft and in sealed. Uh, again, uh, maybe seeing some commander play if you want to build a unicorn deck. <laughs> Are there enough unicorns out there now for a commander deck? Probably, probably. Moving on here, we've got Intrusive Back pa Beast. Pack Beast, not Back Beast. Back Beast, there we go, woo. A five mana 3-3 Beast with Vigilance. When he enters the battlefield, tap up to two target creatures your opponent controls. Kind of similar to the Unicorn here in a way that it can definitely end the match in Drafted and Sealed. Uh, not gonna see any kind of play for Standard because it's five mana for a 3-3 with Vigilance. Is, that's just not great. Uh, but tapping stuff down and draft and sealed is definitely what you want to be doing and this is a card for that especially and it's not a common slot so you're probably going to see it several times maybe wheel it a couple times uh, before you actually pick into it in draft and i think that's just all right also art on this card super cool moving up here we've got ledev guardian a four mana two for human knight with convoke again another good card for draft and sealed could possibly be a good card for standard in a white weenie deck making this a one mana two four i think that's okay not great uh this is definitely more for a command i'm uh, not a commander a um, draft and sealed deck for sure uh convoke making this a one mana two four on like turn three or something like that i think is possible uh, but not really that impactful to me as far as um, once it hits a battlefield. It's just a 2-4 at the end of the day. Um, so going to be kind of a low pick for you. More of a card that kind of teaches people how to play Convoke, more so than actually being a good card in, in and of itself. Um, one more time, we've got Light of the Legion, a 6-mana 5-5 five, five rare angel with flying mentor. And when it dies, put a plus and plus one counter on, e of, uh, on each white creature you control. So a white winnie bomb in standard, a great bomb for you in draft and in sealed, and just an overall bomb like in general in draft and in sealed. Because if you get into this as a pack one rare or pack two rare or pack three rare, you probably want to pick into it because it makes your board state larger when it dies. It makes a creature larger when it attacks in with something else. Um, and it's a 5-5, five, five, so it's hitting in for one fourth of your opponent's life total every single single turn just at six mana and i think this is very powerful where this is probably a card that might see some commander play is in a commander angel deck for sure because again it's a card that makes other angels stronger as well as making their entire board state or our entire board state stronger because most of the angels we have in a commander angel deck will be white as well so love this card the art makes me think it's going to be a boros card and obviously the thumbnail or the uh, watermark below it is boros but it's a solid white card which is interesting to me uh, probably might have been white and red, but they changed it to mono white, and I think that's great, uh, especially into a deck for draft and in seal. Moving up here, we've got Loxodon Restore, a six mana three four elf uh, elephant cleric. This has got Convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. This card's okay, not great, not terrible. Um, just kind of one of those middle of the road cards. Again, Convoke is one of those abilities that if you're ahead in a match with Convoke, Convoke is amazing. If you're behind in a match with Convoke, paying six mana for a three, four that gains you four life is just kind of bad. <laughs> you want to be paying for, you know, six mana for a five, five flyer. That's 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 where you want to be paying the six mana for. Uh, but making this a four mana three, four with where you gain four life, I think that's probably better uh, for sure. But again, Convoke is one of those abilities where it's very good when you're ahead, very bad when you're behind, 
And this is probably a middle of the road pick for me as well for draft and in sealed. Not gonna see any kind of standard play whatsoever. Uh, moving on, we've got Luminous Bonds, a card from pr some previous sets, a three mana enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchanted creature can't attack or block. Just fantastic removal for white for you. I'm always gonna pick this if you see it in draft and in sealed most of the time, as long as you, there's not any better uncommons or rares. This isn't a, a, a common here, so you're gonna see it quite often, um, but a very, very good card. Being able to lock down the largest creature on your opponent's side of the field and be able to get in some more damage, turn over turn, just a good draft and sealed card, good bread and butter uh, for that format. We've got a Perhelion Patrol, a four mana human knight, two, three, with flying, vigilance, and mentor. This is doing a lot of stuff for a common here, and I really, really like it. Four mana, two, three flyer, not terrible, and having vigilance means it can block on your opponent's side of the field as well, which is very good, or opponent's turn as well, which is very good. And having mentor means it can also pump something up, like a one, one into a two, two. So this is kind of a card you want to put auras on top of in drafted and sealed, and I really like it for that. Not going to see any kind of standard play, obviously, because it's four mana, but for drafted sealed, this card is an all star. Definitely get into the if you see them. We have Righteous Blow here. A uh, one mana instant. Righteous Blow deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Gideon's Reproach, this card is not, so it's not gonna see any kind of standard play. But for Drafted and Sealed, this is probably okay. Um, the closest thing to a white uh, cre or white color shock that we can probably get to. <laughs> um, but a good way to um, you know either trade with a creature if you're blocking with a creature and then you need two extra points to get rid of a larger creature, this is gonna do it. Uh, or if they're attacking in with a creature that is just a 2-2 or a 1-1, this is gonna you know deal with it as well. Uh, so good for Draft and Seal for that. And probably gonna be a mid to low pick for you as far as removal, since it's only hitting for two points of damage. Still good, but not amazing. Uh, moving up here for us, we've got Rock Charger, a three mana 1-3 bird with flying. Whenever it attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. So very similar to the uh, Pegasus Courser, I think that's how it was pronounced, uh, from Dominaria. They got reprinted in Corset. So it's just another one of these, uh, which I think is perfectly fine uh, for draft and in sealed. Um, so very, very good for that. A good card that makes, you know, a 5-5 on the ground turn into a 5-5 flyer if you're in Boros or, or uh, Selesny or something like that. I think that's very good. Um, so great card for draft and sealed. Not going to see any kind of standard play, but a 3-mana 1-3 flyer is still just good by itself. Um, but a 3-mana 1-3 flyer that makes something else flying, very, very good uh, for draft and sealed. Always a high pick for me. Uh, Skyline Scout is a 2-mana two 2-1 two human scout. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 2. If you do, it gains flying until end of turn. So a 2-mana two 2-1 two that gains flying until end of turn for 2. It's not terrible, but it's not like what you really want to be doing. It's good for like one or two attacks uh, in draft and in sealed, but at the end of the day, it's just going to trade with something and that's not great um, or just be a blocker forever because again, it only has one toughness. So it's a card that might be okay with some mentor abilities. It's a card that might also pair well with a charger instead of using the uh, two mana here, um, but giving it kind of temporary flying, uh, whatever the attacks in is fine. I wish it had flying just whenever you wanted to pay the two. That be This would have been a much better card because of that because uh, you could, you know, you could block an opponent's attacking creature, but whenever it's attacking in, giving it flying for two, it's not terrible in the mid to late game. And I think it's probably going to be okay. Like a pick for me uh, for draft and in sealed. Not going to see any kind of standard play or commander play. Anything like that. Moving up, we've got Sun Home Stalwart. This is a two mana 2-2 two -two with First Strike and Mentor. Pretty good Mentor card for draft and in sealed. Being able to pump stuff up. It's also a first striker, so get some auras on top of this, and it's going to go ham in drafting and sealed. Um, this is probably one of the few cards where it might see some standard play for Mentor. Again, Mentor's a, a mechanic that I really want to see in action once I uh, kind of make a final decision on whether I think it's good or not. For right now, I'm pretty uh, pessimistic. <laughs> I think this card, this uh, as far as like the mechanic itself, Mentor is kind of terrible. Um, but once I get to the pre-release and get, do some actual like brewing and stuff like that, Mentor might be better from that perspective. Uh, but I think right now, this card might see some standard play, might see some commander play. Uh, but for draft and in seal, this card is an all-star thanks to the first strike clause on top of it. Next up, we've got Sworn Companions. Love the art on this one. A three mana sorcery. Create two one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. So the first token production card we've had since that other rare. And this is a common. So I think this might actually see some play in draft and in seal. It's also a sorcery speed spell. So it's going to be seeing it play on just your turn only. Wish it was an instant, which would make it a lot better. But it's not. And that's kind of sucky. But oh well. Um, for draft and in seal, this is probably fine making two one ones. If you have that rare that makes them four four flyers with uh, vigilance, that'd be amazing. Uh, but if not, making two one ones is probably probably okay for three mana. Um, getting into a lot of these though is okay if you get into a lot of convoke creature or a lot of convoke spells as well. Um, so probably good for that, but probably not great for anything else. No standard play, of course, no commander play. Take heart, I love the uh, art and the name on this. A one white mana instant, target creature gets plus two plus two into end of turn. You gain one life for each attacking creature 
you control for a common. This is quite powerful. A plus two, plus two pump for one mana. Very, very good, especially on instant speed. Um, and if you're attacking in that particular turn, um, you can actually gain some life for each creature you're attacking in with, which is also very, very good. Um, I also love this because it can be used defensively at instant speed as well. Um, you don't get the one life gain for each attacking creature we control for that particular like moment, uh, but you still have the ability to trade with something or block something that's coming in on your opponent's, on your opponent's side of the field. Um, very good for uh, Draft and Steel. Might see some standard play. It's kind of one of those cards that's like, it's borderline, you know? Um, it's one of those things that, depending on if you get into an Ajani Pride Mate deck in standard, this card might want to see that, that deck for sure. Uh, but maybe not, maybe not there. Um, for Commander though, this card is probably just okay. You probably don't want to get into it. Obviously you gain a lot of life if you attack out with a lot of creatures, so that could be something you want to do in Commander, um, since it has a board-wide effect. But usually the uh, spot like pumps for Commander don't really see any kind of play. Moving up, we've got 10th District Guard, a 2-mana 2-2 Human Soldier. When there's a battlefield, target creature gets plus 0, plus 1 until end of turn. Why? 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 So weird. <laughs> uh, if this had flash, it would be better. If this had anything else, it would be better. I'm not really sure why it's plus 0, plus 1. This, this doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, a two mana two two is fine. It's a bear. That's you're probably gonna pick this all day long as far as a low pick for you for draft and seal. Not gonna see any kind of other play in any other format though. Um, art's nice. The uh, plus zero plus one just doesn't make any sense to me. If it was like plus two plus zero or plus zero plus three, I think that might be better um, because it would be more advantageous to attack into stuff. Uh, but plus zero plus three. Uh, just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> and our last white card for the day we've got is Venerated Loxodon, a five mana four four rare elephant cleric with Convoke. When it enters a battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature that convoked it. So this could be a possible eight eight uh, or a just a four four for five or four one if you want to do that. Obviously, if you convoke it, it turns into a. Uh, 8-8 eight, eight there. Um, really like this card for it, Convoke in white. I think this is probably one of the few white cards with Convoke that actually like does stuff and is super powerful. <laughs> so for Drafts and Seal, this can definitely be a all-star bomb for you. Uh, it could also just be a 5-mana 4-4, four, four, which isn't terrible, uh, but a 3-mana 4-4 four, four, or a 1-mana 4-4, 1-mana four, 8-8 four, eight, eight at that point if it's being Convoked uh, is very powerful. Uh, for standard, this might see some play in a deck that wants to uh, kind of convoke stuff out. Um, but I feel like it's probably just a little too slow in that environment. It feels like it's just going to die to something immediately. Um, so again, keep in mind the end of the battlefield ability is like it's a 4-4 four, four, and then it has the end of the battlefield ability trigger. So if they have something that can do four points of damage to it before those uh, counters hit, um, then it's going to die and that's going to suck for you. So a card that's okay and drafted sealed, but probably not going to see any kind of play anywhere else. And that is all of the white cards for Guilds of Ravnica, folks. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you going to run Celestia? You're going to go for Boros in the white colors here uh, for this particular draft and sealed environment. And let me know if you're going to the pre-release as well in the comments down below. Like if you like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the following colors. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.